One reason I made this video is because I've noticed people who are seeking the truth, whether it's in a true crime series or on a news report or in their everyday life, they often get manipulated into abandoning their search for truth. And I actually saw some people react to my last video on their YouTube channel when I talked about different techniques people use to silence their critics and they were learning from that. So as we've seen here with the McCanns, they have the ability to use litigation to silence their critics, as well as threats to silence critics and chill the conversation of any would-be critics. But the McCanns are unique because they have the resources. They've got their fund. Um, so they have all the money they need to do stuff like that. But more commonly, you're going to encounter tactics like mockery or shame or manipulative arguments that are based on logical fallacies when someone is trying to shut you down or stop your search for the truth. And I want to discuss some of those tactics in this video as well. How do manipulators suppress the truth and how can you overcome it? I'm Deception Detective. I'm an attorney trained in statement analysis and this channel exists to expose lies and manipulation. Before we proceed, please hit the like button, subscribe and notification bell. In today's video, we're going to analyze the tail end of an interview with Kate and Jerry McCann about the Madeline McCann Fund. We're going to look at how they got money into that fund and what they use it for. If you've seen my first two videos about the Madeline McCann Fund, you'll know that I believe they use that fund as a war chest to silence anyone who criticizes them and as a way to fund private investigators to go find uh, red herrings and wild geese for the police to chase so that they do not look back at the parents who are the obvious suspects. Without further ado, let's listen. Do you, how long do you want to do this? Uh, in that regard. And in, t in terms of you only have 350,000 left now, how, can you, how long do you worry that you can keep going on for if you don't get any donations? Well, we're always, uh, as directors of the fund, we're always uh, looking at that because uh, one of the remit is for us to fulfil the objectives of the fund, and the fund is to try and find Madeline and bring those uh, responsible. To if you've seen the first two parts of this mini-series within my Madeline McCann series, How to Spot a Grift and How to Spot a Charity Scam, you'll know that usually the McCanns stop short of saying the fund is to find Madeline. And I believe that's because of leakage, because they know that she's not alive out there to be fund, uh, to be found. So what they do is they say the fund is to search for her or to investigate or to review what the police have done, but rarely do they use the word find. So let's listen again. And here we have Jerry actually using the word find, which is nice to see. But because we're seeing this at the tail end of the interview, it may just be a sign that he's remember, remembering what his scripted answer should have been earlier on in the, in the interview. How, can you, how long do you worry that you can keep going on for if you don't get any donations? Well, we're always, uh, as directors of the fund, we're always uh, looking at that because uh, one of the remit is for us to fulfill the objectives of the fund, and the fund is to try and find Madeline and bring... Actually, even when he says the remit of the fund is to, he says, try and find Madeline, not find Madeline. Which is just as weak as saying that the point of the fund is to search for her or to investigate or to find leads. The point is that the conclusion in his, in his mind, based on the words that he chooses within the milliseconds he has to formulate a sentence, seems to always stop short of saying simply to find Madeline. So even here, he stopped short of saying that the point is to find Madeline. It's to try to find Madeline. What does that suggest? It suggests that he knows she's not there to be found. And I know that some people in the comments might be saying, you know, DD, this is a big leap. He's saying they're trying to find Madeline. So that means that they want to find Madeline. And once again, as I always say, what I'm doing here is not interpreting what they say. I'm listening very closely to exactly what they say, and I'm pointing it out to you. 
The other thing I do is I compare what I expect a reasonable person in their situation to say against what they actually say. So the expected versus the unexpected. So when he says that the point of the fund is to try to find Madeline, I believe him. I'm actually showing more respect for his words than people who would say, hey, DD, he means find Madeline. He doesn't mean to try to find her. He just means to find her, right? You're putting words into his mouth. You're jumping to conclusions. And the sad reality is that liars expect people to do that. They rely on people to infer things from the vague words they use or to put words into their mouth that they didn't say themselves because lying is hard. It's a lot easier for someone to lie 99% of the times if someone's about to fool you, someone's trying to trick you, they will tell you 100% the truth, but they will use words that imply something different and they will ho they hope that you will make the logical leap towards making an incorrect, or incorrect assumption based on their words. So the fund, we're always uh, looking at that because uh, one of the remit is for us to fulfill the objectives of the fund and the fund is to try and find Madeline. So the fund is to try to find Madeline. I believe him. And bring those uh, responsible to justice. So there's always an agenda item about um, finances and we need to look at that. We've done other fundraisers in the past and we'll keep looking at that. We've been very fortunate from the point of view of having so many of the public made donations and a large part of the money we we'll spent, as you know, has come from libel damages. Which so I've watched this last tail end of the interview. As you know, I put this interview up in my members section. The members commented on it. Um, I looked at some of their comments in my last video, how to spot a charity scam. And the comments were so intriguing that I just had to watch ahead. And when I first watched this, this part really stood out to me. So listen again. How do they get most of the money in the fund? Now, we've been very fortunate from the point of view of having so many of the public made donations. And a large part of the money we we'll spent, as you know, has come from libel damages. So a large part of the money they get in their fund comes from suing people. So most of the money that they've collected or a large part of it is not uh, from people donating because they believe them or they want to find Madeline. A large part of it is because they aggressively go out on the prowl to find people to sue because those damages that they win fund their fund. And what do I believe their fund is for? It's like a pinwheel. They get money to sue people. When they sue people, they get more money and then they can continue to follow that cycle suing people for money and then using that money to sue more people. They constantly have to sue someone. And this might explain why so many people who talk about the McCanns end up getting sued. And like I always say in my videos, they're welcome to try me. I think it will come down the pike at some point, which is why I'm so careful with my words, because if they do sue me, I want to use that opportunity to do as much discovery as possible, to learn as much as I can, to potentially depose them, and I want to win. So I don't want them to have anything on me. I want to be squeaky clean so we can make the most of it. Which were paid into the fund, so we'll continue to explore it. We certainly need to be looking at uh, income generation over the next months. So notice what he says, right? Lots of our income comes from suing people, and we need to look at some inc income generation over the next few months. Who can we sue? Who can we go after? And this is one technique where if someone has the means to do it, is one technique to silence the truth, to stifle the truth, to silence your critics, is simply to sue them or to threaten to sue them. So litigation is a great technique for someone to sue people if they have the means. However, it's not at all the most common uh, form of stifling the truth that you see in your everyday life. So once we finish this portion of the interview, in this video, I'm going to show you some other examples of way that manipulators try to stifle and suppress the truth, which are more common, which you will, are likely to encounter in your everyday life and what you should call it so you can recognize each one, you know, what the uh, proper name for it is. So when you see it, you can categorize it 
and then how to respond to it. So that will be coming up next. Let's finish off this interview though. There must be a huge pressure on you knowing that you've always got to live for Madeline. Well, you say you know. I mean, we'd love nothing more to find Madeline and then we wouldn't have to worry about that. You're absolutely right. Our focus is in search for Madeline and without the authorities conducting. So once again, we'd love nothing more than to find Madeline, but our focus is to search. So let's listen again. Income generation over the next months. It must be a huge pressure on you knowing that you've always got to look for Madeline. Well, I mean, we'd love nothing more to find Madeline and then we wouldn't have to worry about that. You're absolutely right. Our focus is in search for Madeline and without the authorities conducting that, then the onus is on us and we don't think that's right. The onus should be on the governments to do more. We'd love to give that pressure away. You're right. And you mentioned relying on the trials. How do you feel now that um, Amaral's book is, is, is going to be on the shelves here? Yeah, so... So now the journalist is asking them about uh, Amaral, the detective, the Portuguese detective who was in charge of the case. He wrote a book outlining his theory that they accidentally killed their daughter and then covered it up, which actually aligns a lot with my own theory that I've developed over the course of 19 videos now. So if you want to see how we developed that theory, you can watch my DDX Madeline McCann playlist. If you go to my channel, it's right there on the home screen. I recommend watching them um, in chronological order just so you can follow the progress of my analysis. But you can also sort them by most popular if you want to watch, you know, the ones that uh, my audience seems to get the most value out of first and then watch in chronological order. Well, you know, as we've already alluded to, anyone who wants to convince people that Madeline is dead without evidence to support it, their motives have to be questioned. But So we've seen Jerry do this throughout the interview, and this is another technique to silence your critics. Whenever the interview asks them about someone who does not believe um, their narrative that they are not responsible... Whenever someone questions their narrative that a stranger kidnapper abducted Madeline, they say that these people's motives need to be questioned. And I do believe that that is a veiled threat, right? So if you don't believe us, maybe we need to question you. Maybe we need to see why do you think that? Why are you so suspicious? Maybe we should have our private investigators who are paid very well by our fund go tail you and follow you around and see what you know. Or maybe we should try to dig up something about you to see um, why you have such an opinion of little girls. Right? We need to question you. We need to call you in and sit you down. Maybe we'll send you an official looking letter. That will make you think twice about putting theories out on the internet, won't it? So I do believe this is a veiled threat. So already we've seen two high level um, suppression tactics, right? Ways to suppress critics to stop the truth from coming out. One is litigation, so threatening to sue people for libel or slander. And the second is a threat, right? So not openly threatening to do anything to anyone, but um, insinuating it, right? We might need to question you, and we do have detectives on the payroll, and we've got some nasty people on our payroll too who really think we're innocent and who don't like people who question us. We're grieving parents. How dare you put more grief on us? How shameful of you. You know, maybe we should send someone out to straighten you out. Right? So litigation and threats. And obviously, these are only for people with these means, right? With the money to do it, with people on the payroll to do it. Next, once we finish up with this, I'll show you some more techniques that you are more likely to encounter in everyday life at work or with your friends or with your family or online, even in my comment section. Today, the focus is on asking the public to help us petition the governments to do more. Do you feel that you should be chasing uh, live elections? Some people might say, why don't you just leave all the live stuff to one side? Why try and silence your critics? Well, obviously, we've, we've talked about this in great detail previously. Um, 
The reason why we had to take action was because we strongly felt it was damaging the search to find Madeline. And as Jerry's just said, that is our ultimate goal, was to find Madeline. And just one, can you update people, where are you now? I mean, recently you, you went over to Germany, you translated all your literature. All right, so finally they're saying their goal is to find Madeline. In my opinion, it's too little, too late. And you'll see this often in my denial videos, where if someone does eventually give a a proper denial, it's usually in late in their denial video, which weakens it, or it's in a separate video altogether, or they don't do it quite right. And here we're only seeing the word find pop up very late into this interview. So we're uh, almost 10 minutes into this part of the interview. There was a whole other 10 minutes that we analyzed a uh, part one of this interview um, where they said it once. So they are saying that their goal is to find Madeline, which is finally what we would expect the parents of a missing child to say. Uh, but it's it seems to be a little bit too little, too late. Does that mean that they are guilty? No, right? As I always say, one a deceptive statement or one wrong word does not a liar make. We need multiple signs of deception before we conclude that someone is lying. However, at this point, I've analyzed almost 20 hours of the McCanns doing interviews. So I'm, I'm very firm in my opinion by this point. However, if you watch my earliest videos about them, uh, for example, how to analyze a suspect, which I did two months ago, you'll see that um, we were not quite so certain in the theory, right, on the channel. Into German. So, how can you update people? Where are you now? Have you got any new leads? What's happening with your investigations? Well, I mean, I'd like to say to you that we did have some hot leads, but I mean, the very fact that we're calling for a complete review to identify further areas for investigation is telling you that you know more needs done. All the information needs to put onto one database. Um, because that may be the, the way that we find the key bit of information, a missing piece of the jigsaw. So at the moment you're worried that, that um, there isn't even a central database, so the information won't be not getting cross-referenced well, or shared. Yeah, I mean there's information in lots of different centres that hasn't been brought together, and there could be two key bits of information that individually don't seem key, but put together could give you some valuable information that could take you that one step closer to find a Madeline. So it just seems an obvious and crucial thing to do. And this is why reviews are done time and time again in this country on major investigations. So you must be frustrated that the government has carried out a scope of study into whether there should be a review review, but then no action has been taken. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're asking for. We want to see what action, we want metrics, we want deliverables, and we want the government to do more. Madeline's a British subject. The government should... One reason I made this video is because I've noticed people who are seeking the truth, whether it's in a true crime series or on a news report or in their everyday life, they often get manipulated into abandoning their search for truth. And I actually saw some people react to my last video on their YouTube channel when I talked about different techniques people use to silence their critics, and they were learning from that. So as we've seen here with the McCanns, they have the ability to use litigation to silence their critics, as well as threats to silence critics and chill the conversation of any would-be critics. But the McCanns are unique because they have the resources. They've got their fund. Um, so they have all the money they need to do stuff like that. But more commonly, you're going to encounter tactics like mockery or shame or manipulative arguments that are based on logical fallacies when someone is trying to shut you down or stop your search for the truth. And I want to discuss some of those tactics in this video as well. So let's look at four low-tier manipulation tactics, and then we'll also look at four mid-tier manipulation tactics, and these are ones that you are more likely to encounter in everyday life. Um, whether you're trying to figure out something at work or with a friend or uh, within your family, or even talking online on YouTube or X, uh, and X is where I first posted this. So here are four low-tier manipulation tactics that I've seen in the comments of my 
latest McCann's videos in which I think that you guys will benefit from understanding more so that you can label them when you see them in your own life and how to respond to them. All right, so the four low tier manipulation tactics that I've put on my list are mockery, cynicism, attack, and anecdotal evidence. And we'll just go through them one by one. So mockery consists of when someone makes fun of you, right? An ad hominem attack, rather than debating the points that you've raised. In the case of my McCann's video, uh, you'll see here if you're watching, or I'll, I'm going to read all this out if you're listening on podcast mode. On my last McCann's video, How to Spot a Grift, I had a commenter who said simply, you're scum. Right, so nothing about any of the points I raised in the video, uh, not rebutting any of the claims I made or questioning my analysis, just simply mocking me personally. And if you have got a thin skin, this might shut you up, right? So this is a tactic that although it might not work on you or me, can work on people if they're not aware of it, right? So if they take these things personally, just recognize that mockery is a weak form of manipulation. It's low tier. It's what people do when they do not have advanced manipulation skills. And we'll look at some more slightly advanced manipulation tactics coming up next. All right. So when someone uses mockery, at least on my channel, here's how I like to reply. And I suggest making up your own version of something like this. So rather than engage, uh, say something along these lines. Here's what I say. As far as people who engage in mockery on my McCain's videos. Given the sensitive nature of this subject, which can overwhelm rational discourse for some viewers, your emotional response is understandable. However, such conversations are discouraged on this, uh, discouraged on this channel to maintain the quality of discussion. While I appreciate your attempt to engage, I suggest taking a break and revisiting the video when you're ready. You got this. So you can shut down the mockery by calling it as you see it and being the bigger person and moving on. The debates and back and forth I like to get, um, get into on my channel are over my analysis where people say, hey, you might have heard this wrong or I interpreted, this, uh, interpreted what they said this way. Right? Those are constructive debates and the type of uh, challenging that makes the blade sharper, right? A, uh, a sword is forged in iron, right? Or, or forged in uh, steel, whatever they say. Uh, the, the more you bang a sword on hot iron, the stronger it gets, right? So I like those sorts of debates. All right, next up is cynicism. And this is another low tier manipulation tactic that you are likely to encounter in your everyday life. And cynicism is when someone basically just discounts what you say because it's pointless or, um, you know, there's no point in researching it further or you simply don't know, right? So they're trying to dismiss you without actually addressing anything you say. And um, I have an illustrative comment here, which I'll read from my last McCann's video, How to Spot a Charity, a charity Scam. And the commenter says, it is naive to say it was an accidental death that they are covering up and thus lying. Their friends, media, the British police and government would not ignore the obvious facts to protect them. Why? There is more to this story. So much more. Okay. So this comment doesn't engage with anything I say. It tries to dismiss it and doesn't raise any points of its own, right? Just some cryptic, there is so much more. So here's how I responded to that, this one. And I suggest writing something of your own if you have a, a YouTube account or X or anything where you engage with other people and you encounter this. And I know that lots of my followers who came from my early days on YouTube when I was uh, looking at video gamers have their own channels where they post clips or they look for cheaters and they tend to encounter a lot of this. All right, so here's what I responded. 
naivete is having a simplistic and uninformed view of complex matters. Proposing the most likely scenario after nearly 20 hours of analysis is the exact opposite. I'm uncertain about the point you're trying to make, and your choice of words seems to, seems to suggest you might be as well. All right, so once again, I'm not engaging in mockery. I'm just pointing it out as I see it. Right? They've not used the word naive correctly, and they don't seem to understand what point they're making, so I'm not going to try to understand it myself. All right, then we get this one which is the attack, where someone attacks you. If it's face-to-face, -face, they might physically try to attack you. Attack you, um, But if it's over email or here on social media, the attack basically consists of trying to ruin your channel or trying to dox you. Here's an example I have from this guy, Peter Martin, 5030, on YouTube. And he says, trial by YouTube when you have clearly already chosen an outcome grotesquely inappropriate. So he left this on one of my McCann's videos. And I replied, you're watching the 17th video in a series. The things I say in this video aren't said, said lightly. I suggest starting at the beginning to see how we got here. And he says, reported to YouTube. And there's really nothing else you can say to that, right? Once someone goes on the attack, the conversation's over. And now you either need to uh, block them or um, you need to win that, right? If, it's, if someone's challenging you face-to-face -face and they attack you, then you better be willing to fight and knock them out. So I think he ended his little attack here, but if I do see him pop up again, uh, there will be severe consequences for him, right? So never take an attack lightly. All right, then finally we have our first um, logical fallacy. So when people debate you, sometimes they'll rely on arguments that are just wrong on their face, right? They're just based on a fallacy. And if you can't spot the type of fallacy they're using, you might actually be convinced of it. Or you might think, hey, they've got a good argument, so I should back down and leave it. So I want to point out two here. The first is anecdotal evidence. So here we have this guy who commented on my video, what does an embedded confession look like? And he commented on that video about my Bigfoot video where I said that Bob Gimlin uh, was hoaxing when he said that he got a video of Bigfoot. And he starts telling me an anecdote about how he spoke with Bob Gimlin, right? I have personally met and talked with Bob Gimlin directly two times. Um, and he said what you're saying is false and he got very detailed. So that's, an, that's anecdotal evidence. Right? That's like someone saying, well, I have a friend whose mailman's sister saw a UFO. It doesn't prove anything to me. Right? I want to hear it from the source, which is another reason I also analyze um, as direct to the source as I can. So when I'm looking at the death of John Benet Ramsey, I don't look at um, hearsay from the neighbors or you know, a news report if I can help it, right? if the case facts are simple enough. If the case uh, facts are simple enough. I just look at the words of the people involved, the parents, the brother. Or in the case of the McCanns, I look at the parents' own words. I don't look at, um, you know, second and third level evidence, right? Because once you start getting into that, you start getting into hearsay and anecdotal evidence. All right, and then there is a bonus low-tier manipulation tactic, which is the appeal to authority. And in this case, we have this guy saying that, um, he says in another comment, apparently you're not aware that there's a, there's a whole new documentary movie coming out where he explains everything in detail and they recreate it and blah, blah, blah. The point here is that I don't care what an expert says or what a study says or um, what some government says or some researcher or somebody who has even more credentials than I do, right? I trust my own ears. So if someone wants to tell me, hey, this really, um, this lawyer who could beat your ass in court and is way smarter than you and has an IQ of XYZ and has a million followers, he says this, right? Behavior panel says that the Wells 
aren't necessarily involved. And they also say that Kate and Jerry McCann are innocent. That means nothing to me. I don't care what authority you cite. If I'm listening to the parents myself, I'm going to trust my own ears. And I encourage every one of my, uh, everyone in my audience to do the same. There's a reason I do my videos the way I do. I play it right alongside you and I tell you my thoughts as I think them. And you are welcome to agree with me or challenge me or agree with me, but still come to a different uh, conclusion. Right? That's the whole point of my channel is to teach uh, you how to spot deception. And the thinking critically part is something you've got to do on your own. All right. So those are some low level manipulation tactics. Please do let me know in the comments if you found those useful. They are mockery, cynicism, attack, anecdotal evidence, and appeal to authority. All right. Now let's look at some mid-tier manipulation tactics. So these ones are a little bit more sophisticated and a little bit harder to recognize. And also, um, depending on who you are, may be a little bit more effective at shutting you up or shutting you down or scaring you off a topic. And they are, the first one is superstition. So I see these superstitious comments a lot on my McCann's videos, on my Summer Wells videos, and on my John Benet Ramsey videos. Basically, any video I do about a little girl who is missing or dead, you see lots of these comments pop up trying to shut down the conversation about it. So I'll read you this one that is from one of my McCann's videos. The commenter says, I do hope no one commenting will ever have a child abducted. I hope they will never know the anguish or the conspiracies. I find myself wondering if it is the fact that the McCanns are professionals who have a lot of support, which makes people determined not to believe their pain. Perhaps karma works with our other thoughts as well as our actions. So perhaps beware what you project onto other people and be very sure of your facts before you judge. Ooh. All right. So this is appealing to superstition. All right. Be careful about talking about this. The boogeyman might get you. You better be 100% certain before you say a single word about this. All right, so it's another tactic to shut down conversation. And oddly, it's a mid-tier one. It's not low-tier because it does work on some people. And here's my response. Feel free to take this or um, make your own version of it if you're seeing these sorts of comments on your videos or your social media or even encountering them in your own life, right? If you have a relative who tries to shut you down with uh, superstitious nonsense. And here's what I said. This is the exact superstitious nonsense the McCanns exploit when they present visions of Madeline being abducted as if it were proof. Ignore the voodoo, listen to what they say, and importantly, what they don't. All right, so I'm not going to challenge their beliefs in mysticism. I'm just trying to simply redirect them to the facts at hand, right? Focus on the evidence, not the fear, not the ghosts and the boogeyman. All right, next up is another tactic that never works on me, but I do, as I have some people tell me that it does work on them, All right? So this is an important one, uh, shame. So lots of comments I get are people saying, well, how dare you talk about this little girl? How dare you profit and make money on YouTube off of talking about this? Right? You're making money, like this comment here, you're making money out of someone's grief. It's shameful, don't you think? And all these comments are so similar that when I reply to them, uh, at this point, I literally just send them a link to this post on X so they can see how unoriginal their comment is. And my reply to this sort of comment is and has always been, I only care about two things the truth in teaching people how to spot it before misinformation becomes too powerful. I can't be shamed, I can't be bought, and I can't be blackmailed. Capiche? And that seems to be very effective, and I've had quite a few comments of people telling me that they use that on their own channels. So do feel free to take it or make your own version of it, but it is a good response to shut down uh, 
the shame tactic, right? The manipulation tactic of trying to shame you for seeking the truth. In reality, if you are looking for the truth, nothing you're doing is shameful. All right, the next up is uh, something I'm starting to see more and more often now on my channel, which is whataboutism. Right, so these are arguments that aren't based on the facts. They're pure hypotheticals, and they're designed to make you have a hypothetical debate. So whataboutism is, is a manipulation tactic that's trying to get you to challenge your beliefs based on stuff that someone just made up totally one-sided. And here's an illustrative example from one of my Madeline McCann videos. The comment is, if Madeline was found next week alive, having been kidnapped, how would you describe all the things you said? And my response was, I'd ask for a DNA test. Right, nothing about some hypothetical situation has any impact on my actual analysis. Because none of the things I do here are hypothetical. Right? I'm listening to actual words and I'm giving you my actual thoughts on those words. So if someone's trying to engage in whataboutism, for example, if you're having an argument with a significant other and they say, well, well, what about if you cheated on me, then what? Or what about if I moved out? Well, okay, is that purely hypothetical or are you threatening me? Or are we playing the what about game? Or are we in reality and actually having a real uh, conversation? So just recognize that one, what aboutism, because people use it more and more, I see. Another one I see is a false dichotomy. So where someone acts like two things are mutually exclusive, like they cannot exist together, and you have to pick one or the other. And we see this all the time with social situations, or I'm not going to mention them here because um, I don't want to open up any cans of worms that, that distract from the actual point of this video. But just be aware that if there are two binary things, you don't have to pick one. Right? I rarely do on my channel. Right? There's many things about wider society that you have no idea what my opinion is. And I have no idea what your opinion is because it doesn't matter because I don't have to make a choice. So a false dichotomy is when someone presents and we see the media do this, governments do this, people in your own life probably do this, right? You need to pick him or me or, um, you know, something along those lines, right? Well, one of you is in trouble, so it's either you or you. False dichotomies are manipulative because they don't present the truth, right? If, if you don't have to make a decision, then there is no dichotomy. You just simply can ignore it. So here is an illustrative example from one of my uh, McCann's videos. And the person says, Dear uh, DD, these people are grieving. They have lost their daughter. It's been going on for many years. I do not believe they are deceiving. I think they are ground down, institutionalized, yet grieving. So did you spot the false dichotomy there? Here's what I replied. I also believe that they are genuinely grieving the loss of their daughter. However, I also believe they are lying. Right? Someone can be lying and grieving at the same time. And this person replies, grieving and lying? Right? It never occurred to them that they're not mutually exclusive. Right? It had to be one or the other. They're either grieving and innocent or they're pretending to grieve because they killed her. Well, if you accidentally kill someone, you can 100% be grieving. You can be sad about that. Even if you kill someone on purpose, you can be grieving about it. Maybe you regret it. You regret your decision. You did in the heat of the moment. Now you feel bad. But you don't want to go to prison for it, so you're going to lie about it. right? So when people present false uh, dichotomies, it's either because they're manipulative or there's just a lack of imagination. They can't understand how two seemingly different things can both happen at the same time. And my response to that was, grieving and lying are not mutually exclusive actions. The loss of their daughter is a tragedy, regardless of whether they were involved in her death and cover-up. So let me know if you want me to do more in this series. Um, right, There are definitely more sophisticated manipulation tactics and I pointed some of those out in my video about Alan Dershowitz responding to the Epstein files. 
Um, so if you haven't seen that video, I recommend watching that one because he is a top level defense attorney. He uses manipulative tactics that might not work on you or me, but would work on 99% of the population. And then if you have any other tactics you'd like me to put into a list, uh, do drop them in the comments below. Um, and I've had plenty of honorable mentions, which I will include on another list if you guys want me to do more like this, uh, from Rock Chick on X, like, uh, you know, Gaslighting, which I've looked at in my Jada Pinkett Smith videos, or Torrensing, which is one that I've never heard of. And there's even another one called Ceiling, which I post an, ex an example of on X, which I will include, or, or Sea Lioning which I'd never heard of before. I just learned about today, uh, but I posted an, an example of that on X. So please do let me know if you'd like me to do more a, um, examples of manipulation tactics that you're likely to encounter in life. And just to recap, we've looked at uh, five low tier ones as well as four mid tier ones. And there's definitely levels above that. Also, uh, this concludes this interview with the McCanns about their fund. Do let me know if you want me to continue a deep dive into the Madeline McCann fund. I've seen in the comments that there's plenty more to dig into, but I've also found some other really good interviews of the McCanns um, that I want to analyze where they discuss other topics that are very revealing. Uh, so please do let me know in the comments. I'm also going to do another community poll suggesting four more topics to look at so we can add another series to the rot rotation. Uh, so if you have recommendations of what you'd like me to put on that community poll, uh, please do let me know, but I've already got four very good uh, subjects. So I'll post that soon. So if you are not subscribed, please do subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see when I put up that poll so you can vote. I only want to make videos that you, my audience, wants to watch. Uh, so I take your feedback very seriously. Until next time, stay true.